Pemmican, Wikipedia article audio. Pemmican is a concentrated mixture of fat and protein used as a nutritious food. Historically, it was an element of First Nations cuisine in certain parts of America. The word comes from the Cree word Pima registered trademark HKA sent N, which itself is derived from the word Pima registered trademark, fat, Greece. It was invented by the native peoples of North America. Ingredients Traditional Preparation Serving History In popular culture Pemmican was widely adopted as a high-energy food by Europeans involved in the fur trade and later by Arctic and Antarctic explorers, such as Sir Ernest Henry Shackleton, Fridjof Nansen, Robert Falcon Scott, and Roald Amundsen. The specific ingredients used for pemmican were usually whatever was available. The meat was often bison, deer, elk, or moose. Fruits such as cranberries and Saskatoon berries were sometimes added. Blueberries, cherries, chokeberries, and currants were also used, but almost exclusively in ceremonial and wedding pemmican. Traditionally, pemmican was prepared from the lean meat of large game such as buffalo, elk, deer, or moose. The meat was cut in thin slices and dried, either over a slow fire or in the hot sun, until it was hard and brittle. Of meat are required to make one pound of dried meat suitable for pemmican. Then it was pounded into very small pieces, almost powder-like in consistency, using stones. The pounded meat was mixed with melted fat in an approximate 1 colon 1 ratio by volume. In some cases, dried fruits, such as blueberries, choke cherries, cranberries, or Saskatoon berries, were pounded into powder and then added to the meat-slash-fat mixture. The resulting mixture was then packed into rawhide bags for storage. It can be stored for a maximum of 10 years. A bag of buffalo pemmican weighing about 90 pounds was called a toro by the Ma copyrights of Red River. These bags of toros, when mixed with fat from the udder, were known as toros fins, when mixed with bone marrow, as toros grand, and when mixed with berries, as toros a grains. It generally took the meat of one buffalo to fill a toro. In his notes of 1874, Northwest Mounted Police Sergeant Major Sam Steele records three ways of serving pemmican, raw, boiled in a stew called rubabu, or fried, known in the West as a rashid. The pemmican was cooked in two ways in the West, one a stew of pemmican, water, flour and, if they could be secured, wild onions or preserved potatoes. This was called rubabu, the other was called by the plains hunters a rashid. It was cooked in a frying pan with onions and potatoes or alone. Some persons ate pemmican raw, but I must say I never had a taste for it that way. The voyagers of the Canadian fur trade had no time to live off the land during the short season when the lakes and rivers were free of ice. They had to carry their food with them if the distance travelled was too great to be resupplied along the way. A north canoe with six men and twenty-five standard 90-pound packs required about four packs of food per 500 miles. Montreal-based canoemen could be supplied by sea or with locally grown food. Their main food was dried peas or beans, sea biscuit, and salt pork. In the Great Lakes, some maize and wild rice could be obtained locally. By the time trade reached the Winnipeg area, the pemmican trade was developed. Ma copyright is would go southwest onto the prairie in Red River carts, slaughter buffalo, convert it into pemmican, and carry it north to trade at the Northwest Company posts. 
For these people on the edge of the prairie, the pemmican trade was as important a source of trade goods as was the beaver trade for the Indians farther north. This trade was a major factor in the emergence of a distinct ma copyrightis society. Packs of pemmican would be shipped north and stored at the major fur posts, Fort Alexander, Cumberland House, Lea La Crosse, Fort Gary, Norway House, and Edmonton House. So important was pemmican that, in 1814, Governor Miles MacDonnell started the Pemmican War with the Ma Copyright Tis when he passed the short-lived Pemmican Proclamation, which forbade the export of pemmican from the Red River Colony. Alexander Mackenzie relied on pemmican on his 1793 expedition across Canada to the Pacific. North Pole explorer Robert Peary used pemmican on all three of his expeditions, from 1886 to 1909, for both his men and his dogs. In his 1917 book Secrets of Polar Travel, he devoted several pages to the food, stating, Too much cannot be said of the importance of pemmican to a polar expedition. It is an absolute sign qua non. Without it a sledge party cannot compact its supplies within a limit of weight to make a serious polar journey successful. British polar expeditions fed a type of pemmican to their dogs as sledging rations. Called bovril pemmican or simply dog pemmican, it was a beef product consisting, by volume, of two-thirds protein and one-third fat, without carbohydrate. It was later ascertained that although the dogs survived on it, this was not a nutritious and healthy diet for them, being too high in protein. Members of Ernest Shackleton S1914A Euro 1916 expedition to the Antarctic resorted to eating dog pemmican when they were stranded on ice for the winter. During the Second Boer War, British troops were given an iron ration made of 4 ounces of pemmican and 4 ounces of chocolate and sugar. The pemmican would keep in perfect condition for decades. It was considered much superior to biltong, a form of cured game meats commonly used in Africa. This iron ration was prepared in two small tins which were fastened inside the soldiers' belts. It was the last ration used and it was used only as a last resort a euro when ordered by the commanding officer. A man could march on this for 36 hours before he began to drop from hunger. American adventurer Frederick Russell Burnham, while serving as chief of scouts for the British Army in South Africa, required pemmican to be carried by every scout. A 1945 scientific study of pemmican criticized using it exclusively as a survival food because of the low levels of certain vitamins. In the Swallows and Amazons series of children's books by Arthur Ransom, the characters repeatedly refer to their bully beef potted meat tins as pemmican, perhaps due to them pretending to live in a fantasy world of pirates. A definition of pemmican is given in episode 13 of season 3 of Robin's Nest, entitled The Happy Hen. Pemmican is a type of food researchable and cookable in the video game Rim World. The food is ideal for caravans as it lasts long and is lightweight. Pemmican is mentioned in the first episode, pilot, of the television show Due South. It also features minimally in other episodes of the show.